I've had folks, a lot of folks now, because I've been doing this a long time, that they tried doing plant-based diet and they felt better or they felt fine at first, but then they started to get sick and they don't know why. You know, I've had a lot of doctors that are plant-based. In fact, I've had doctors that have written the lifestyle medicine boards who came to me because of illness, because they're like, well, we, we're supposed to know about lifestyle medicine and lifestyle medicine is using a nutri- plant-based diet as well as other lifestyle measures to prevent or treat disease. Um, why am I still sick? And so my specialty is understanding um, cellular repair and optimizing immunity on a cellular level and how we can use nutrition to do that. Hey friends, welcome to episode seven of the Plant-Based Diet Benefits Podcast. I'm your host, Trent Lindsay, a Master in Raw Food Nutrition Educator, and I am super excited to present this show with you guys today. Dr. Goldner is our guest, and if you are to only listen to one episode of mine so far with this Plant-Based Diet Benefits Podcast, please make sure it is this one. Dr. Goldner is a board-certified medical doctor and the author of two best-selling books, Goodbye Lupus and Green Smoothie Recipes to Kickstart Your Health and Healing. She has been featured in multiple documentaries such as Eating You Alive, Whitewashed, and The Conspiracy Against Your Health. She has been featured on TV News and The Home and Family Show, as well as many radio shows and podcasts, and is a highly sought-after keynote speaker who shares the stage regularly with Drs. Ornish, Esselstyn, Bernard, Gregor, and T. Colin Campbell, to name a few. She has been featured on the front cover of Vegan Health and Fitness magazine three times, including the recent cover of Fit Over 40. She is a regular contributor to T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies, and she is featured in the Journal of Disease Reversal, Reversing Lupus and Herself, as well as multiple case studies in reversing end-stage kidney failure with her hypernourishing nutrition protocol. She is a graduate of the Temple University School of Medicine, was chief resident at UCLA Harvard Residency, and holds a certificate in plant-based nutrition from Cornell University. She is the founder of veganmedicaldoctor.com, goodbyelupus.com, and creator of the Hyper Nourishing Protocol for Lupus Recovery. And let me tell you guys, this conversation inspired me to start making some changes in my diet as well to improve my health, and I am so excited for you guys to listen in. So without further ado... Let's start the show. All right. Hey, friends. Welcome to the show. I am super excited to have uh, Dr. Goldner with me today. Dr. Goldner, thank you very much for being on the show. My pleasure. All right. So let's just jump right in. I wanted to start off with just getting uh, a little bit of an overview of lupus. I know um, you know during the intro to the show, um, we heard a little bit about uh, your expertise there. Um, but if you could just explain for those of us that maybe aren't as familiar with that particular disease, um, how, how does it affect uh, an individual? So lupus is an autoimmune disease. And what that means is it's an illness in which you've got so much chronic inflammation that it actually disrupts the function of your immune system. So your immune system's actually uh, got two major parts. You have the inflammatory immune system. That's really important. That's uh, the part of your immune system that will help you get rid of a cold or will help you recover if you damage your your body, like you hit your knee on the corner of your bed or something like that. You need the inflammatory response to come in and resolve the issue, right? And then you also have an anti-inflammatory immune system that is supposed to keep your inflammation levels low when you don't need them, right? So in general, we should be walking around without much inflammation at all and then get an inflammatory response when needed. Now, both parts of those, and there's the immune system is more complex than that, but on this is on a basic level, right? So when you're looking at those aspects of the immune system, you build your immune system out of what you eat, like every part of your body. And when you eat things like omega-6 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids are in oils, they're in animal products, uh, processed foods, and they're in nuts and things like that. When you eat those, those actually are the nutritional basis for the inflammatory immune system. And most people get plenty of that. You have to eat them to build that part of your immune system, but most people eat that more than they should. And they have plenty of omega-6 and plenty of inflammation. The problem is the other part of the immune system, the anti-inflammatory immune system, is made out of omega-3s. And most people don't eat them at all. And so what's happened is we, we get this issue where people are 
constantly generating inflammation, not because they have a cold, not because they bang themselves on the corner of their bed or, or got, you know, played, played a really intense game of paintball. They're having chronic inflammation because they are eating inflammatory foods, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks all the time. And so their body is just using all of that to create constant amounts of inflammation all the time. And it's also exacerbated by other things. When there's damage to the gut by eating the wrong things, uh, your gut becomes what they call leaky in layman's terms. And that also can trigger autoimmunity. So it's kind of a perfect storm where if you've got too much inflammation as a baseline and then your gut's not working properly because you're not eating the right foods and you happen to have the genetics for immune system problems, you can develop something called autoimmune disease. So autoimmune disease is when your immune system no longer can identify what's an, an invading bacteria or an invading virus or something it needs to attack and your own organs, your own body. So lupus is really the most aggressive of the autoimmune diseases in most cases. And it's one in which your immune system can literally attack any part of your body and destroy it as if it was trying to destroy an invading bacteria. So it can attack uh, very commonly kidneys. It can also attack the lungs, the heart, the brain. And uh, it also tends to cause people to have extreme fatigue and also arthritis and really diminish the quality of life. You can also have antibodies that create things like blood clots. So uh, people with lupus often have a debilitating course in their lives, and it attacks people who are young. Usually people with lupus uh, can traditionally get it in their teens to 20s or even 30s or 40s, which is very young to have a debilitating chronic illness. Uh, although right now my youngest person that I've seen uh, who needed help with lupus was three years old, so it's getting worse and it's getting younger. And it usually means that you're going to have a very limited life. So for myself, I know I had lupus at 16. And at the time I was diagnosed, I had arthritis, I had migraines, I had stage four kidney failure. And um, by the time I was in medical school, I was getting, I had many strokes from getting blood clots into my brain because of lupus. And so I had to learn how to live a purposeful and productive and happy life at the same time that I could never trust my immune system to take care of me. In fact, my immune system was always so busy creating the antibodies that hurt me that it didn't work well to fight diseases that I needed its help with. So if I got a cold, I could be in bed for weeks to a month. I once had a sinus infection in medical school. That sinus infection lasted like six months, no matter how many antibiotics we threw at it, because my immune system didn't work between taking an immunosuppressive medication and having an immune system that was too busy doing the wrong stuff. So immune autoimmune diseases in general are extremely debilitating. They become more and more common and lupus specifically can be deadly. I mean, you see people, even celebrities out there who have lupus are often young. You know, Selena Gomez just had a kidney transplant because of lupus. She's in her twenties. Uh, Tony Braxton, you know, she just did an interview saying that 300 days out of the year, she's having bad days from lupus. And she just tried to go on tour and ended up with pleurisy, you know, so, uh, which is inflammation of the lungs. So extremely debilitating. Um, using Western medicine, the only thing they know how to do is suppress the immune system. And so basically, they only know how to help people by turning off their immune system. And you can imagine how devastating that can be for people. Because yes, if you turn off the immune system, you're less likely to have the pain and disease progression of the disease. But now you are more likely to get infections. And I've seen people, I saw one lady who had rheumatoid arthritis from childhood and was on steroids her whole life and ended up getting an infection through her entire body and into her brain because her immune system didn't work, almost died. So it's a, it's a very scary thing to have. It's a scary thing to treat for the patients and also for the doctors because you have to balance these risks and try to save lives. And what's most extraordinary about it is in my experience, it's completely reversible when you eat in an extremely anti-inflammatory way. So for myself, after 12 years of suffering with lupus, everything from kidney failure to to mini strokes, um, this year it'll be 14 years that I've been completely lupus free, all because I changed my diet 14 years ago to a super nourishing plant-based diet. And uh, that happened right when I was an intern in medical school. So I finally graduated medical school and thought I knew everything there was to know about disease and then accidentally cured myself when I switched to a plant-based diet um, because I did it for fitness. I didn't do it for, for health because I didn't know that it could impact me. And I was able to do all the things that I was told I could never do. I was told if I tried to have children, I would die because my lupus was too severe. I've had two healthy sons. 
Um, I was told that I would have it for the rest of my life and I would probably be handicapped by my 40s. I'm in my 40s. I've had extraordinary health. In fact, I was just on the cover of Fit Over 40 showing how, how you can be healthy and fit over 40 years old instead of being handicapped or dead by 40. So my life has shown me that there is much greater power for us to eliminate and prevent disease coming from what we eat than any medication I've ever seen. And over the past decade, I've helped thousands of people from all around the world reverse diseases like lupus and um, MS and rheumatoid arthritis and mixed connective tissue disease and so, uh, and so many other autoimmune diseases, as well as diabetes, heart failure, fatty liver disease, all by changing their nutrition. And I do it in such an aggressive way using what I call hypernourishment that people who've been sick for decades can be back to feeling amazing within a matter of weeks. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> it's beyond awesome. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, the, the diet is such a key Key, key part to keeping you healthy. I, I I completely agree with that. And, and, um, yeah, I was just talking with you before we started recording for the show and mentioned how I was sick for, for a couple of weeks. So, um, I, I think I'm now learning a few things here, uh, in, in this episode, I'm sure. And, um, maybe, maybe I'll be, uh, you know, testing some of those things out and providing some, some, some updates. Well, that's wonderful. You know, there's, there's so many different ways to do a plant-based diet. And that is part of the issue, actually, is sometimes people will try it. You know, they'll say, I tried being vegan or I tried being plant-based and they didn't feel good. And then they, they drew the wrong conclusion. Their conclusion was, I didn't feel right. So therefore, this isn't good for me. I must be a carnivore <laughs> or something like that. And they don't really understand what's going on. Or I've had folks, a lot of folks now, because I've been doing this a long time, that they tried doing plant-based diet and they felt better or they felt fine at first, but then they started to get sick and they don't know why. You know, I've had a lot of doctors that are plant-based. In fact, I've had doctors that have written the lifestyle medicine boards who came to me because of illness, because they're like, well, we, we're supposed to know about lifestyle medicine and lifestyle medicine is using a plant-based diet as well as other lifestyle measures to prevent or treat disease. Um, why am I still sick? And so my specialty is understanding um, cellular repair and optimizing immunity on a cellular level and how we can use nutrition to do that. So not every plant-based diet is the same. Not every plant-based diet is equally anti-inflammatory or healing. Um, so we just have to be really specific depending on how healthy people are, right? But it's very common to have that issue where you go, wait a minute, why am I so sick? And then we just make little tweaks and we fix it, right? Like, uh, you know, Ellen Jaffe Jones, have you heard of her? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Uh, you probably like talking to her. So Ellen Jaffe Jones, uh, she is a, a vegan athlete. She was PETA's like sexiest vegan over, I forget now, I think it was over 50. Um, she's written like four or five books on being a vegan athlete, right? So really, you know, has been known in the plant-based world for a long time now. In fact, she was, uh, she's even worked as one of the chefs who taught the McDougal program, right? So if you want someone who knows like, plant-based nutrition, who's been doing this for a long time. She's a great person, right? Well, she, um, this past year, so I'm allowed to talk about it because anytime I talk about a person by name, it's because they gave me permission and they are publicly talking about it. So, <laughs> so she came to me because um, this year she developed psoriasis. And it's like, how can this person who's been plant-based for a decade, who's a plant-based athlete, who has otherwise been healthy, she looks super fit. She's winning races. And she developed psoriasis. So I get a text message from Joel Kahn. You know him? He's a yeah. plant-based uh, cardiologist. Yeah, yeah. And we're both from the Northeast. So we talk to each other like with the Northeast style. So he sent me a text message that says, this is Ellen. Fix her. <laughs> 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 and I went, yeah, man, no problem. Right. So um, she's awesome. And so what I found was she was doing a plant-based diet where she was eating lots of cooked uh, vegetables. She was eating, um, you know, things like starchy vegetables, potatoes. She was eating like whole grains. Um, but she wasn't really eating much in the way of raw vegetables. She wasn't um, drinking enough water. Uh, she wasn't eating omega-3 fatty acids or focusing on eating enough of that. And so I said, listen, you know, you probably would have gotten psoriasis 20 years ago had you not been plant-based for, for this much time because you have the genes for it. But you weren't eating inflammatory foods. So because you didn't eat meat, because you didn't eat dairy, because you weren't eating processed foods, you didn't trigger those genes as aggressively as maybe somebody else who was eating the standard American diet. However, you're not eating enough of the most nourishing foods 
to prevent yourself from ultimately getting this disease. So I put her on my smoothie regimen where I figured out that most people don't want to eat as much more raw vegetables as they need to get all the nutrition they need to reverse disease. But if I can pack it into a blender with a little bit of fruit and, uh, and, and make it taste good, they'll drink it. So I, that's why I do that. So I do that and it works really well. So within two weeks of adding the raw foods the way I tell her to with adding high doses of omega-3s from flax and chia seeds, adding in um, at least a pound of raw vegetables a day, mostly in leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, things like that. Within two weeks, her psoriasis plaques were all disappearing. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you don't, if you don't mind, can you touch base a little bit more on that? So I know you're a big fan of the green smoothies and I've, I've noticed that and I'm a big fan of them too. Um, yeah. So is that kind of what you're, you're recommending is maybe uh, adding in like some, you know, frozen banana, uh, you know, with some, some water, some, some dark leafy greens like spinach or kale. Uh, and, and then I, I usually use like chia seeds uh, or flax seeds for omega threes. So just kind of toss all that in the blender, mix it up. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not just a fan of green smoothies. I'm like the number one fan, you know, uh, <laughs> and here's the thing. Not all good green smoothies are both the same, right? You can say that you're having a green smoothie and a lot of people will do this. They'll say they're drinking green smoothies and it's mostly fruit and they anointed it with like a handful of spinach, you know, and they put like a tablespoon of chia in there. That is great if you have generally good health it's not going to be disease reversing. So the way that I was originally able to, and still can reverse autoimmune disease, which think of it this way. I mean, if you've got one of the most inflammatory and aggressive illnesses on the planet, and that can be reversed using this, then if you have a tendency to get colds or something, this is you know definitely going to be a big deal for you, right? So if you take, um, if you really focus on having a large percentage of your diet come from raw foods, which is what I suggest. I think, you know, at least, at least like 60 to 80% of people's diet should come from eating fresh raw foods, eating things like salads and drinking green smoothies and eating fresh vegetables. Those are where you get your nutrition from. That's where you're building your cells from. That's where you get your vitamins and minerals and micronutrients from. So that's the best place to get them, right? So if you're trying to aggressively increase how many vegetables you eat and you want to do it through a straw, you take like a minimum of like eight cups of leafy greens. And I say that because I use a Vitamix blender. And so I use the measuring uh, lines on the Vitamix blender. Right. Big greens. And you use your fist or your hand, you push it down tight. Like you pack it tight so there's no air in there. And you pack the greens in until you hit the three quarters mark on your blender. So on a Vitamix, that's the eight cup line where it's three quarters full, but whatever blender you have. So you pack it tightly so there's a straight line across the greens at the three quarter mark of your blender. That is the dose of greens. Then you take in, if you're already healthy, a handful of flax or chia seeds will work perfectly. If you're trying to aggressively reverse illness, a half cup will be even better, right? Put that in there. Then you fill the water in to the same level as the greens. And then with the, the 25% space you have left, it's where your fruit grows. So you can put in that um, super ripe banana if you want. You want it really ripe with the brown spots so it's like too sweet to eat it, but it's perfect for a smoothie. You can put in frozen fruit, like um, frozen mangoes and pineapples and things like that. And then you blend that up. And what happens is it's, it's just, it looks so green, it scares the crap out of people. But then when they blend it, it's just enough fruit to give it a nice flavor where it tastes like mango and, and banana, but it's really built full of greens. And, and a lot of people really think that, you know, if it's that much green, it's not going to taste good. It tastes great. So you can imagine if you can drink that by the end of the day, if you can, you know, even if you're eating other plant-based foods, so if you're having your beans and your cooked vegetables and all those other things, but throughout the day, you continue to have a glass of that smoothie until it's empty by the end of the day, you're going to dramatically increase your body's ability to heal itself from any kind of assault, because that is where you're going to get the nutrients that your immune system needs. The omega-3s to get rid of inflammation. Omega-3s also increase your metabolism, which increases the speed at which your body can respond to a threat. So if you're low in omega-3s, your body's really sluggish. If you increase your omega-3s, it's going to be really rapid. So that, and that means it can respond quickly to a cold. It can also respond quickly to if you exercise and you're asking it to build muscle or lose fat, it's going to answer the messages more quickly when you get more omega-3s. And then you've got all the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and everything that your body needs to repair itself. So that's actually something that my husband and I teach. Um, we have a 
website called smoothieshred.com, S-H-R-E-D, smoothieshred.com, and it's totally free. And we created that as a gift for people to help people understand that if they just add these to their lives without changing anything else, even if they're not vegan yet, if they just add these to their lives, they're going to start dramatically improving their health, their energy, their fitness. And that usually is the gateway to stepping into a full plant-based diet for most people and really embracing that because once they feel the benefits, they're more willing to make the other changes, right? Versus you have to give up everything and then wait for the changes, you know, in order to, um, to make it worthwhile, right? So we, uh, on smoothieshred.com, we actually give free recipes for smoothies, um, a whole bunch of videos on how to add exercise, how to make the smoothies, all that kind of stuff. We do it entirely for free uh, just so people can have access to that because we believe that people should have access to the information they need for their health and their best life for free. They shouldn't have to pay to have that information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I wanted to follow up on the on the smoothie, like the smoothies versus, uh, say, juice. Um, I know that's, you know, sometimes a, a controversy for some people. So I used to juice a lot of greens and you know, maybe the same amount of greens that uh, you're tossing into your uh, Vitamix, you know, take those and juice them with some some apple and ginger and and, and things like that. Um, that may not be as easy for a lot of people. But but what's your what's your stance on juicing the same amount of greens as opposed to uh, blending it up? Effective. It's not it's not effective. So juicing is not a whole food. You know I think about you know people talking about being whole food plant based. You've just processed your food, right? You extracted the juice, you extracted some sugar and some vitamins, but you didn't eat the whole food, so you're not going to get the whole benefit, right? The most important parts of the food are left behind. So first of all, uh, the fiber. Fiber is essential. We really need it for our health. In fact, there was a recent study that was looking at fiber itself might be key in reversing or preventing things like lupus, which I'm not shocked because I'm giving people extraordinary amounts of fiber. Although I think their medicine tends to be reductive. So instead of looking at the fact that they're giving that more vegetables work, they're like, what part of the vegetable works? But it's all parts, right? So fiber, also the majority of the minerals are usually stored in the skin or in the actual leaf itself, right? And you're leaving that all behind and just pushing out some of the water that was inside of it. So you're not going to get the same level of disease reversal when you're, you're, it still has some benefit. You're getting some vitamins, you're getting some uh, nutrition, but nowhere near the same. It also creates a lot of waste. You know, when you put all that in there, if you have juices alone, you're still hungry, right? I mean, you drank it, but you didn't pull up. When you have the smoothie, the way I say it, all of my clients, they complain about being full. They're like, I am so full. I don't want to eat my oatmeal. I'm like, great. Don't eat the oatmeal. Drink the smoothie. That's what you need. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if you're, if you're full, it's because it's an enormous amount of food. Like if you put that smoothie, if you emptied and built the blender and then emptied it out into a bowl, it's enormous how much food that is. Um, so it's real food. It's a real meal versus juicing, which is not a whole food. It's not a real meal. You're not really fully feeding yourself. So um, I, I don't mind if someone wants to add juice uh, because they enjoy it, but I don't use that as a replacement for the smoothie at all. Okay. Excellent. It's great to hear other people's perspective on that. Um, yeah. I, I enjoy both and, and using the Vitamix for sure. Um, I mean, that's like my number one favorite appliance in the kitchen. Oh my God. It's the best appliance in the world. But it's also, it's not even... Um, it's not even like a opinion or, or perspective. You know, sometimes people ask me that, like, what's your opinion on this or that? I never teach my opinions. Uh, I don't think opinions are useful for people. I only teach results. So I've spent the last decade doing disease reversal with some of the most aggressive diseases on the planet. So I know what works, right? I've seen, you know, in my six-week rapid recovery group, I heal 30 people at a time. 30 people at a time come in to get help every single day. So I help them every day for six weeks, right? I see who gets better rapidly. I see who struggles. So that's made me really good at picking apart the most important aspects of what people need to do to get their health back. And the juicing alone does not give those kind of results, but the smoothies do. Sometimes people can feel better, especially when people are eating inflammatory foods. If they switch to juicing or do a juice detox, they feel so much better because they're not assaulting their body anymore, right? They've taken out all the things that they were eating that was hurting them. But if they go back to not eating properly, it's all going to start up again versus when you do the protocol, the way I teach it, it actually eliminates the disease, which is that that's what we want. Like for me, it's disease reversal, not just halting it, not just feeling better, but getting you back to a place of truly being healthy. All right. And so outside of the 
um, you know, green smoothie? Like what, what, what does your diet look like? You know, cause I would imagine that green smoothies like your, you know, probably your breakfast and then you snack on it, you know, maybe two more servings or something like that throughout the day. Um, but do you have, you know, separate meals in addition to that, you know, brunch, like lunch, dinner, what, what do you guys typically eat at, during those times? All right. So you're not asking for disease reversal. You're just asking what I'm personally doing right now. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So for me personally, so I'm already healthy. So it's just what the type of diet you need to reverse the disease is way more aggressive than what you need to stay healthy. Right. So uh, as someone who's already healthy, I don't have to aggressively pursue, you know, like people who are healing, I always tell them you should have 80% raw or higher. Me, I've been healthy for 14 years. So I still make sure every day I eat the foods that keep me healthy. Um, so what I do now is I'm about, I'm, I call myself high raw. So usually all day long, I'm drinking smoothie. So like right now I'm drinking a smoothie while I work um, because that it keeps me energized and it keeps me able to keep going. Right. So it would be really weird if I was eating a salad while I was trying to talk to you or talk to my, cause I, I see everybody using either telemedicine or I use uh, if, if they're nutrition clients uh, outside of where I practice, um, I still use technology like Skype and things like that to meet with people. So that would be really odd if I was eating salad and talking to people. But when I'm drinking a smoothie, they, they actually find that cool. They're like, oh, cheers, I'm drinking mine too, right? Uh, so I love that. And it works and I feel great all day long. Uh, so I usually do that all day while I'm working. And then uh, at dinner time, we usually cook something. My kids also, by the way, drink green smoothies for breakfast. And um, so we drink those all day. And then dinner time, we usually cook something whole food plant based. So it could be something like tofu and broccoli. It could be something in the pressure cooker because that thing is miraculous, you know, um, broth and beans and potatoes and, you know, other vegetables and things. My husband right lately has been making this tofu cabbage potato soup in the pressure cooker that's just delicious. Um, so we do stuff like that. Um, and that's usually most of the time, you know, we'll eat like that. And then normally after dinner, uh, after the kids go to bed, I usually have a really big salad. Uh, and it's funny, it's, I, I crave it because eating raw all day long, I have super high energy. I feel really great. And then when I have my cooked dinner, I enjoy it. Like it's nice to eat the cooked starchy foods and everything is delicious but then I feel my energy drop significantly. So when you're used to having that high energy from raw foods, I can feel it when it falls from the cooked meal. So, uh, but I don't mind because it's getting late and I don't need to be hyperactive at night. Right. But usually what happens is I tuck my kids in and I feel sleepy and then I end up eating a big salad before I go to bed. Um, Just, I just crave it. I need a little bit more raw food. So probably um, if I cut that, if I made each smoothie a meal, I would say, um, three to five. So if I'm having about five meals a day, three to four of them are raw. And then, you know, one to two of them would be cooked. And then maybe on the weekend, it might be a little bit more. Um, And then I also, what I teach people is if you are healthy, you can have what I call recreational eating, uh, one or two meals a week. So recreational eating is when you ate something that is inflammatory and you knew it, but you did it just to get high. (laughs) <laughs> so if you have like a vegan cupcake right or if you have, if you go out to like a chinese restaurant where they use the fake meat right so that's sugar or that's processed foods or it's oil right i know it's unhealthy but if i've been doing smoothies and salads all day and i eat a little bit of oil in my dinner or i have some sugar in the cupcake i'm fine it still causes damage 100 percent. it caused damage it caused inflammation right away but I'm otherwise healthy. So my body can reverse that easily. It's like a paper cut. I'll be fine tomorrow. When people are sick, I don't let them have recreational meals. I'm like, you, you not yet because you, you might be right in the process of building a scab over a big wound. And then you ate that sugar, that oil, and you pulled the scab off and you're starting over. Right. So I usually tell them just in the beginning, when you're trying to heal, you focus on the healing foods until you're up and running. And then once you're healthy, that's when you can start adding that. It's kind of like the, the example I always give is, you know, if you break your ankle, right? So running is extremely healthy. But if you have a broken ankle, that's not going to be good, right? We can't do that. Right? Uh, so let's say you have a broken ankle and you're trying to fix it. Well, the way you fix it is you elevate it, you ice it, you use compression bandage on it. Um, well, if it's sprained, if it's broken, you're going to have a cast on it, right? So let's say you have a, a bandage on it, right? And it's starting to heal and it still hurts when you're elevating it. But if you elevate it nice it all day, it starts to feel better, right? And then just once a day, you get up and you jump up and down five times on your foot, right? You're never going to heal the ankle. 
even if all day long you're icing it and rate and elevating it. Right. So sometimes people think when I'm sick, especially with an aggressive disease like lupus, they think if I'm sick and I'm doing well, most of the day, it's totally fine to have some vegan processed food at dinner or some oil or some sugar, because most of what I did was fine, but that's not the case. Right. So as soon as you did that, you kind of undid that whole day of healthy eating because you've just jumped on your broken ankle. Now, once that's healed, no problem, right? Jump around as much as you want, not going to cause damage. So I'm in that place now where I am extremely healthy. My family, we don't get colds in my house. I mean, let me, let me add that. There are colds that happen every few years. Someone might get a virus, but it never lasts more than 24 to 48 hours ever. And even when it comes, it's mild and it's gone within 20, by the end of the first 24 hours, it's either gone or 80% gone. And that is a dramatic change for me because when I had lupus, a cold could last two to four weeks, if not longer. Now, I don't remember the last time I had a cold. Like I can't, and I have two kids in public school. I don't remember the last time I had a cold. But when I did, it was like, oh, I wake up today. I'm feeling kind of snotty. Let me just double up on my smoothies. And I'm, st- I'm still fine by the next day. Like I said, max two days. So that's what I've come to realize a cold should be, a very momentary decrease in energy or increase in bad symptoms, but it shouldn't stick around. And that's true for my husband. It's true for my kids. My 10-year-old last had a cold when he was two, and he's in public school. Like, <laughs> so that's incredible. Right? And when I went to medical school, I learned that kids should get a cold or flu once a season. Like, that's normal. And now I realize that's normal for kids that eat Doritos and goldfish crackers and chicken nuggets. <laughs> but for a kid that starts his day every day with a green smoothie and eats, like, that, that kid eats like four apples a day. He eats avocado with sprouted bread sandwiches for lunch. That kid, he doesn't get colds like that. So it really changed the way I understand the human body in such a dramatic way uh, when I was able to heal myself, where I now understand that illness is actually, it's abnormal. It's common in our country and people are used to it, but it's not actually how your body wants to function. Your body wants to recover from insults and infections very rapidly, but it can't do it unless it has the right tools. Excellent. Thank you for all that information. And I, I want to ask you, um, and I think I'm going to, I already know the answers to some of these questions, but I want to ask you what your stance is on a few different things sure. um, because they may be uh, vegan, but you know, it's not necessarily you know good for your body, or at least that's why I think you're going to tell me. Okay. Um, so, so what's your stance on caffeine? Uh, you know, caffeine is an interesting one because there have been studies that have shown some benefits like to exercise right? They improve people's exercise performance. Um, There's also been things that show that it can cause problems in people, especially if you have heart disease or other issues. What I have found in my work is that caffeine does not stop people from being able to recover. So again, I'm very results oriented. I don't, I don't like to form opinions. I like to see what happens. And what I've seen is, um, For people who who drink a ton of coffee, for example, that I don't like because it creates enormous amounts of fatigue, right? So if someone's drinking tons of coffee, I always teach them, you know, there's only a certain amount of energy you have. So if you use it all up with your caffeine in the morning, you're going to crash later because you you, you used it all. You you robbed yourself of whatever you had. Um, So I really try to get people to cut back on that. But if somebody has one cup of coffee a day and they're not using sugar and they're not using dairy, they're able to use my rapid recovery protocol and reverse their illnesses just fine. In fact, what happens is they tend to stop the coffee on their own because they have so much energy from the food that they no longer desire it anymore. So um, I don't make people give up their caffeine, uh, especially especially if they're hardcore addicted because caffeine is also, it's a laxative. Uh, so people start eating high fiber foods and then give up their laxative. They get painfully constipated and then they get, you know, everyone, anyone who's constipated is in a bad mood and they're going to blame that on me. Right. So I always tell them, listen, um, make sure you're not using any dairy or sugar and make sure you're getting all your foods in. And then if you can wean slowly off the caffeine, that would be great. But I don't find that it's an urgent issue that people need to fix in order to get their health back. Okay. Excellent. I'm sure that will make a lot of people happy um, <laughs> knowing that they can keep at least some level of caffeine. And then I, I agree. I, rem- I remember when I was having a lot of green smoothies and I, I, I should start this up again more, but having a lot of green juice or green smoothies in the morning. And, and I agree. Like I had so much energy in the morning that I didn't really uh, care to have the caffeine. I had a neighbor who told me that she drinks her coffee before her smoothie because 
if she has a smoothie first, she doesn't want the coffee. And I'm like, I don't understand the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people are fun. Yeah. All right. So uh, here's another one. So what's your stance on uh, alcohol? So alcohol is inflammatory. It's a lot of fun, uh, but it's inflammatory. So when I was recovering from my own disease, I didn't drink uh, alcohol for probably a year and a half to two years. Um, and I was just eating healthy foods. If I went to a party, I brought some kombucha with me, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and had fun that way. Um, but uh, yeah, what I recommend is that if you're trying to reverse an illness, that is something that's creating inflammation. So while you're doing your recovery program, you stay away from it. Once you're healthy, that would be one of your recreational items. So like for me, I love a nice glass of wine or, or sometimes a nice dark beer or something like that. I love that. Um, not, you know, that, but again, healthy, having that once in a while, it always creates inflammation, but you can heal it just like you can get a paper cut and it's gone the next day. But if you're doing it too much, if you're having multiple glasses of the day, that's bad for you for sure. Uh, and if you are currently sick and trying to get better, then even if you're doing tons of smoothies and great foods, if you're drinking as well, you're going to slow down or even prevent your recovery. So that's a recreational item for healthy people if they want it. All right. And I, I completely agree with that. I, I've um, actually been sober for a couple of years now. I used to have uh, some issues with drinking. And so that was, it, it's made a huge difference for me. I mean, just, Absolutely. Um, you know, simply not, you know, waking up all sluggish and, you know, after having something like that. Um, and it's something I promote, you know, trying to have, you know, alcohol free living for sure. But um, yeah, you know, it definitely makes a difference. You know, when you um, even one glass of wine can make somebody wake up feeling tired that wasn't, that would have otherwise woken up. Okay. So there's definitely, you know, I don't believe in it. You know, the alcohol companies try to promote that there's a benefit. It's not improving your health in any way. Uh, it's recreational. So I see alcohol the same way I see the vegan cupcake. You're, you're choosing to hurt yourself in the belief that you'll recover by the next day. <laughs> but if you are sick, either of those things are going to cause significant amounts of damage. And I find that, and I think they're both equally addictive, by the way they're equally addictive and destructive. You know, um, a lot of people don't really give enough gravitas to how destructive um, processed and sugary foods are. I think I have, uh, you know, I'm also a psychiatrist and I've treated people in addiction um, for a large part of my life. People who had addiction to methamphetamines and cocaine and other issues like that. And I have found that it is a much greater struggle for people to get off of uh, meat, dairy, and processed foods than for those people to get off their drugs. Um, and one of the biggest issues is being confronted with it all the time, right? You can, you can change your social situation and not see those drugs every day. But if you're trying to give up meat, dairy, and sugar, I mean, it's everywhere you go, whether you're walking through Costco or the supermarket or you're at your friend's house and they're saying, just have a little bit at someone's birthday. How could you not have a piece of cake on someone's birthday? Or what's one little bit? Oh, there's just a little butter in there. Oh, just pick the cheese out, right? Like there's just constant assault uh, in your senses and peer pressure that people deem to be acceptable when it comes to foods where it is extraordinarily difficult to make that change. Um, and people don't give, they don't really understand that it's still an addiction, that they're actually junkies addicted to processed foods and meat and dairy, and it is destroying their health. So I think that I, I really look at them all in the same way, that if you're someone that can occasionally have a glass of wine and you don't have issues with overdoing it and you don't have any other health problems, I don't see it to be an issue. If you can occasionally have something that's inflammatory uh, whether once a year the person decides they're going to eat meat or dairy or something, or once in a while they eat a vegan cupcake or something, and otherwise are able to do well and their health is good, then again, I don't see a problem with it. But for some people, even one bite or one drink is going to set them off and they're going to go down a horrible road of addiction. And those folks, it's better to just stay away. Yeah. Thank you for that. And um, what, and this is maybe specifically for the clients that you that you have, um, what impact does, does stress have on their recovery? <laughs> stress is a major factor in illness. And that has to do with not just autoimmune disease, but with your susceptibility to colds, with your susceptibility to heart disease and all sorts of other conditions. So stress in and of itself is inflammatory. It activates your inflammatory immune system. Uh, so if someone's trying to recover from a disease, and they've got high stress, it will stop them. And that's why, you know, I have 
um, these rapid recovery programs where literally I work with people every day uh, so that they can actually recover. And the reason that I created those is for some people, for a lot of people, me telling them what to eat, even if we have an appointment online and I give them an exact program here, change your breakfast to this, change your lunch to this, do this, do that, do that. They still don't do it. Right. Or they think they're doing it and they don't get full recovery. So I realized that for a lot of people, they need me to hold their hand every day to get better. And so I've been doing this for a long time, about a decade. I've been putting people through rapid recovery. And in the past two years, I've done it in group format. And what I found is people who are otherwise happy, so they're happy, they enjoy their lives, they feel full of passion and purpose, but they have the disease. All I do is change their nutrition and they are often disease free in four to six weeks. And then there are the people who have a lot of stress in their lives, a lot of anxiety, depression, and stress. Those people struggle, even if their nutrition is perfect. Now, their nutrition tends to not be perfect because the stress causes them to make bad decisions, right? But it dramatically increases their, their recovery time. And they have a lot more ups and downs, good days and bad days, because they might have a good day. And then if the next day they don't feel as good or there's high stress in their life, then they start worrying about it and then they make it even bigger and then they lead to another bad day and another bad day. So uh, a large part of what I do in my programs with people is I help them change their entire lifestyle, their way, their unhealthy thinking habits or unsupportive beliefs, their um, unhealthy habits around self-care and stress management, exercise, sleep, and I change their diet. So basically, I am like an over-intrusive mother <laughs> in their life every day. What did you eat? How did you sleep? You know, what's your stress like? Did you do your meditation? What did you do? Every day. And what happens is when people listen to me and they make those changes in every area, the nutrition does its job so fast. Those people can literally uh, be pain-free or 80 to 90% of the way there within a month to a month and a half. And these are people who've been sick or disabled for decades. You know, if you go to goodbylupus.com and you scroll down uh, on my page where I have my programs and things, there's video after video that people send who literally are saying within four to six weeks, they're dramatically different. But if you listen carefully, what they say is, I'm not the same person anymore. A lot of them say that. That's why. Because I had to teach them a better way of dealing with their stress. Because listen, if you're sick, it is not just the result of your food. It's the result of every way that you live your life, exactly how you feel right now. So anyone listening, take, a, take an inventory of yourself. Every, exactly how you feel right now is a result of the way you sleep, the, the, the habits and the beliefs you have, and the way you eat, all of those things, and how they impact your genetics. So your genetics have to be triggered and they can be untriggered if you can change those other aspects of your life. So I'm glad you brought that up. It is an essential part of healing is changing the way you interact with your body and the way you deal with stress and the way you care for yourself. And eating is just one way in which you do that. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a lot more of a holistic approach, I think. Um, and, and if you look at most people who uh, you know find some sort of like fad diet or they, they just go on a diet, I think that they focus so much just on the food that they don't necessarily change some of the other aspects of their life. Right. And then they blame the food. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I love my, my groups, because if I'm watching you every day, I know exactly what it is, right? Where if I just saw you one time, I'd be like, well, it might be this, it might be that. But I'm like, no, 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 I see you. Yesterday, you were stressing out about work. And today, your arthritis is worse, right? You need to work on your stress, right? So if I'm watching someone, it's easy for me to say, oh, you need a little bit more omega-3s, or you need to do this, or it's because of this or that, or like, hey, your stress is going to kill you, and we need to fix that. So yeah, it is very essential. Being healthy is, it truly is a lifestyle and a mindset. Yeah, awesome. And um, I want to be cognizant of your time as well. I know you have, um, you know, patients to see. So I just have one more question for you. And that's just if you have any other, you know, final advice for the listeners um, to, to maybe get somebody who, you know, isn't plant based to, to kind of motivate them to, to make that decision to go plant based. I think the most important thing for you to really focus on is what you want for your life. So I call that people's why. You have to think about what you want for your life. Do you want to live longer? Do you want to be healthier? Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to be fitter? Um, what, what do you want for your life? You know, eating plants is the answer to getting all of those things. I mean, even your grandmother knew that. Eat your vegetables, right? I mean, people know that on some level, but they have terrible addictions. So what I usually tell people is, one, be focused on what you want, and two, start by adding what you're missing. I think that a lot of times people approach this as a loss. 
Like in order to be healthy, I have to give up the things that I love. And I put love in quotes because it's not love, it's addiction, but it's addiction, it's comfort, it's habit, right? But I have to give all these things up in order to improve my life. And I think the best way to fix that is to add what you're missing. So you go to smoothieshred.com, check out the free recipes, start making some smoothies and see how you feel. Just add them. Don't, you don't have to give up your meat or dairy or anything else. Just add them. And start noticing how much better your body can feel. And then as you feel ready, start eliminating the things that are hurting you in your life. But do it because you feel empowered and strong to do that. And realize that you're not actually losing anything. What you're receiving is truly a gift. Because whether you are religious and believe in the Garden of Eden, or you believe hardcore just in biology and evolution in which we evolved to eat what grows off of the trees and off out of the earth, either way, the food that we were meant to eat is growing from the planet. And that is a food that will give us the best possible life and health possible. So start by putting that into your body. Take the pressure off yourself that you have to be perfect tomorrow. And just be focused on all the good things you want from your life, not on the momentary excitement that you might get from something on your plate. I don't think anybody could have said it better, Dr. Goldner. It's been a, a pleasure having you on the show. Um, thank you very much. Obviously, I'm going to be including in the show notes all the, all the links to your guys' websites and how to get in contact with you uh, to make it easy for, for people to find you. Um, and thank you very much for being with us today. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Okay, friends, there you have it. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking with Dr. Goldner, and I hope you guys learned a lot during this episode. For more information and to view some of her links as well as the transcript of the show, please check out our show notes page at plantbaseddietbenefits.com slash seven. And consider joining our Patreon family as well and supporting the show. I'd greatly appreciate it. You can check out our Patreon page at www.plantbaseddietbenefits.com slash Patreon. It's a great way to support our show even for as little as a dollar an episode. Just helps to keep the, the show running. Uh, smoothly and uh, helps me keep going uh, with this podcast. I hope you guys find a lot of benefits from it. And it's been a lot of fun for me to talk with people like Dr. Goldner. And up next, we have a couple of uh, gentlemen who have lost over 100 pounds uh, on a plant-based diet uh, over the next couple of episodes. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on hearing their story as well. Thank you very much for joining me today. Until next time. Take care.